How to Become Enlightened, Part Two, from the Great Lung Po Lu Si Ling Dam of Wat Ta Sung, who was, of course, the Lu Xit Eg, the first apprentice or first prime student of the Great Lung Po Pan of Wat Bang Lum Ko, which is the temple where I first began my journey into the true practice of Vipassana Kamatan and of the Mecca. And this is part two to follow my playlist series to try and translate all 12 episodes of Lumpolu Sealing Dam's um, How to uh, Practice Beb Sukhavipatsako which means kind of in a light-hearted or in a easy-going fashion and just natural fashion without pushing it, which is the middle path of the Lord Buddha. And so I thought I would try this time to record with Lung policy and pause and translate as he goes along and maybe intercede with my own insights with forgiveness of the triple gem <coughs> to try to explain at least what I understand from some of the things he says. So here we go with part two of uh, How to Become Enlightened, which is the second part of the first of the four stages of enlightenment. Arum Prasodaban, the mood or the character and personality of a stream enterer, a Sodabana. Puttajarit, hmm? so this episode is called Puttajarit. Jarit means kind of uh, your attitude or your your mental makeup. Uh, putta means awakened, or Buddha if you want. But actually, putta jarit means awakening, uh, intentional mind, attitude, mental attitude of awakening. And here we go. And the Prat Sodaban has still uh, only a little bit of Panya. Panya is one of the three um, factors of, uh, as one of the way of explaining factors of enlightenment is to split them into three, which is uh, the Eightfold Path can be split into three, which is Sila, Samadhi and Panya. Panya. Or in Thai we say seeing samati panya sila, which is the moral precepts, and uh, samati, which is of course the uh, concentration, and panya, which is insight or wisdom. But this doesn't mean worldly wisdom. This means spiritual wisdom. And so uh, the Sodapana has only a little bit of this special enlightened wisdom developed. So he has developed Panya to uh, a beginner's level. <laughs> He thinks about death almost constantly is present somewhere within his mind and he sees death or she sees death as a natural thing and of course unavoidable so accepts the truth of um, mortality the finality of all things which means he sees anicca also he sees impermanence in this sense. Life is something that is not permanent, but that death is definite, so definitely permanent, uh, as something that is unchangeable. Life is something that is changeable. Death is unchangeable. And he or she, the stream enterer, 
I will refer to as the stream intro or the sotapanna. The sotapanna uh, <coughs> thinks about doing good all of the time and to not uh, be unskillful. So it's careful to be skillful and to avoid being unskillful and wants to do good. This is one of the things that a stream enterer must accomplish uh, within their personality or must become, must develop as a natural um, attitude, a natural <coughs> part of your mental and spiritual and emotional makeup that it becomes part of you. For stream entry, this is an essential way of being. In the episode before, I, uh, meaning R Lumporusi Lingdam, spoke about the Sakari Tida. <coughs> So you already know about the story I told you in the previous episode. And that in the first episode uh, I mentioned that Lumpur Silingdam mentioned that the Sodapana has to cut the three fetters, the first of which was Sakayatiti, uh, the belief in a self. That the Sodapana, the stream enterer, sees that the ra the body is not us and uh, the self and his self or the stream enterers the body is not the self of the stream enterer and the self of the stream enterer is not the body or in the body or anything to do with the body yeah. and that the body is not the self <laughs> The Sodapana uh, attains this and further realizations because he always examines in an introvert fashion the five khandhas, or if you wish to search on Wikipedia, you must search skandhas, which would be S-K-A-N-D-H-A-S, or search for the five aggregates because these five aggregates you need to study. If you wish to understand Lung Polu Siling Dam's teaching, you have to, and to practice, you have to understand the five khandhas so that you can examine them. The stream enterer examines his five khandhas or his five skandhas, five aggregates, which is Rup, Vetana, Sanya, Sankhan, Vinyan, or in traditional, uh, English translated Bali would be Rupa, uh, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyana, which means form, and respective in the same order, Rupa, form, Vedana, uh, feelings or emotions, Sanya, perception and memory, Sankhan, conditioned thoughts, and Sankhan also means every other of the aggregates because they are also conditioned but in this case Sankhan means the fourth aggregate conditioned thought and the fifth would be Vinyan or Vinyana which means consciousness and so the stream enterer examines form, feelings, perception and memory, um, conditioned thoughts and consciousness and Lumpur Sealing Dam doesn't say this but I would say this, that um, he also sees that there is impermanence 
uh, the, there is the three marks of existence presence within all of the five aggregates which would be um, impermanence all things are constantly changing and because they're all constantly changing and you can't keep things in the same way they were you can't keep the good mood forever they are therefore dissatisfactory which is dukkha the second mark of existence and that because you can't control them not even your own aging process or your health uh, your own body it is also anatta which is not self your feelings they come and go you remain so your feelings are not yourself and so he looks for these sees these three things within his five aggregates yeah the stream enterer examines his five aggregates and sees the three marks of existence within those five aggregates as they as he observes their process <laughs> The stream enterer sees that his five aggregates are just not self, they are just components like uh, the components of a car or something, but they are not the car. And uh, that in this sense he sees that his body is not self and has shattered or cast off the first fetter to a certain degree in this sense. But the stream enterer only knows this to a elementary level and he is still caring about his body and still worries about it and he just has enough to know that he has to die but he is not fully enlightened. He still doesn't see the body as not self in the fullest extent. He only has begun to see it on a basic um, level, but which is much deeper than the way most people see their own bodies. So he's already changed and has begun awakening but he's not completely shattered this fetter. And so, um, just these basic things, before going any further, are definite necessities to cultivate and develop for stream entry. And uh, the stream enter, uh, through his own experience of practicing the practices taught by the Buddha, should have developed complete faith in, in uh, a complete absence of doubt of the truth of the Buddha Dhamma, of the Dhamma and the methods taught by the Buddha, and of the Dharma taught by him. <coughs> And that um, knowing and accepting that we must die and being aware of it on a daily basis is part of accepting the Buddha Dhamma of the truths the Buddha explained because it is one of the main basic truths which the Buddha explained. <laughs> I want to now uh, jump to the third fetter, which is the uh, Silata Paramat, that means um, mm, the purity of the Sila, of the moral precepts. Oh, 
สมเด็จพระบรมโลกนาถทรงตัดว่าพระโสดาบันจะต้องมีศีลบริสุทธิ์ The enlightened one stated that the stream enterer must have pure precepts. And this means some a difference between having impure intentions but not misbehaving because you promised yourself to keep a rule, or being having complete absence of the intention that breaks the precept. There's a difference. There's two levels. A normal practitioner still wants to kill the animal or the mosquito. Wants to swat the mosquito with a killing instinct. Whereas, um, if the instinct is not present, whether or not you might accidentally kill the insect, and then know, oh, I accidentally killed an insect. I know this is some karma. I know there is some cause and effect here with this. At least with my own conscience, I will regret this. It's one more piece of baggage. Then a stream enterer will know this, but just continue on his way because it's in the past and look forward and let go of it. Whereas a stream enterer will not possess this instinct of harmful intention. That oh my God that. Goddamn fly! I want to kill it. The little devil, the little dastardly bastard, doesn't happen. So the, the stream enterer mustn't have rid themselves of this instinct. To you, the listeners, I see in the audience there are. Uh, monks and novice monks and Karavasa lay practitioners. Uh, there are different ways of keeping the moral precepts, depending on your status, especially with, for example, the. Um, chastity vows. The monk has 227 rules, including various other sub rules for an ordained bhikkhu monk. For the Samanera novices, there are ten main rules or precepts to keep, with another seventy-five kinds of sub precepts, which are also included. That means eighty-five. And more interesting for most listeners, for the lay practitioner, must. Cultivate the reality of the five moral precepts as taught in Buddhism, and must also complete the four Brahma Viharas, which are the four celestial abodes. Fancy name for something which means uh, metta, compassion, or open friendliness, and um, karuna, generosity, which might mean the generosity to help somebody or answer somebody. Or to <coughs> to um, be re be be assist people doesn't just mean to give money, but to practice generosity in all its facets. And the third would be uh, mutita, which means the uh, intention or the actual willingness and intention to help others, not just the readiness. The compassion for others, but the actual willing, for helpful intention towards others is mutita. Mm. To have a good heart, to wish to be helpful, and want to do good things. And the last one would be upekha, which means equanimity. Equanimity means you have no enemies and you are nobody's enemy. But it also means that you are also 
Um, even though you wish to help others, when you cannot, you will not suffer because you are equani you have equanimity. So you exist in equanimity with all others, but you do not suffer for that which you cannot change, and you change that which you have the power to change for the better. So those four qualities are the four celestial abodes, the four Brahma Viharas, and the five precepts is, of course, Panati Bhata, uh, do not to kill, um, Atinatana, not to uh, steal, um, uh, Kame Sumichachara, not to be adulterous, so don't take somebody else's husband or wife, or don't cheat on your own husband and wife always be true and uh, musawata don't lie or tell tales on people to cause separation or arguments or misunderstandings or schisms or, and that includes writing or publishing and um, any kind of speech like that and the last would be um, uh, sura mirayamachabamatatana, which means intoxicants which make you unskillful. You have different interpretations. Some people would say that means just alcohol. Some people would say it means any intoxicant, be it a drug or alcohol or something that makes you unskillful. And uh, you can argue that out with yourself, what that means. But I think it means what's in your heart, and if you're following desires, I would stay away from it. <coughs> and self-satisfaction and seeking is anyway definitely something to stay away from. And so um, you continue listening to Lung policy. <laughs> So how to help to have pure sila, pure precepts, without having to force oneself to stop oneself from doing something because the wrong intention is still there? So when you practice sila, how uh, when can win means uh, to abstain. Uh, in which way do you abstain? Hmm? Do you abstain because it's a rule, but your heart actually wants to do the thing you're abstaining from doing? Or have you ceased to wish to do that thing and you abstain from doing it because there is no desire to do it anymore? Because really, what really matters is your intention in your heart when you say or do or think something. And so let's say if we kill an animal, if you intentionally kill the animal, so you swat the fly intentionally, then that is with a killing intention. And just how much anger, if you just kill it because you want to kill it, that's a killing intention. But if you kill it, hating it, with a, God damn that fly, I hate this thing, really bothers me, then it's even worse. There's a presence, there's no presence of the first precept of not killing. But if you accidentally kill, and there was no intention there, then you still committed, killed the insect, but without the intention. And so intention is a very important aspect of the sila, of the precept keeping. A stream enterer, if he sees he has broken a precept by killing an animal, he will know, he will be knowing of it that his precept has been broken but he will also know if his uh, intention was there or not but that's all it's not as if his uh, precepts were broken 
but there's as if a hole had been made in them, a small hole. And so even a small hole isn't really a good thing to have, is it? A hole in your wall. And so he sees that by killing, uh, stream Mantra sees that through killing animals or through having this intention uh, makes holes or breaks the precepts or makes holes in the precepts and ceases to want to do that because uh, he sees the damage it does to his path which he has chosen. Apart from not killing and not torturing or being unkind to animals, he also develops a, a street he she stream enterer develops the kind intention to want to help others and to assist, to be helpful. He sees all other beings as equals, that we're all in the same boat, basically. We're all fellow sufferers. And so develops this compassionate, um, I would call it a universal mind, or a um, samaki means a collaborative mind to be mutually helpful towards his fellow sufferers, including animals. Uh, he has some desires for pleasure and Um, I have to think about how to translate this properly. Uh, the stream entra wants to be happy but does not want to suffer uh, or others, wants others to be happy and others not to suffer and will work towards lessening other people's suffering and to increase other people's happiness. Instead of wanting to kill, it flips around the feeling inside to want to be generous, want to help, and to feel compassion and mercy towards others. So equanimity begins to be born. I sometimes get shocked, Lung policy says, uh, that many of you like to uh, mistreat animals. I see that and my heart feels very sad. Why does that make me sad? Because animals are composed of the same things that we are and they're not really any different to us. They have hunger and thirst and needs just like us. When they suffer or have the same feelings and needs as us, why should we hate them or mistreat them or look down on them? Some people say, oh, it's a dirty old dog, its body is dirty. But what about our own bodies? Where is it better than the animal? Animals have shit in their bowels. 
we have shit in our bowels. They have piss in their bladders, and so do we. Animals have blood and uh, slime and um, pussy substances, just like us within our bodies. Animals eat both fresh and aged rotten things, and so do we humans, like fermented fish. Animals like to have sex, and they have sex, and so do we. But they would say that animals don't kill many humans, but humans kill very many animals. Animals bullying or um, mistreating humans are very few, but humans who mistreat animals are very many. And so who is it who should be looked down upon, really? Should it be the humans who look down on the animals? Or should the animals look down on the humans? So sit and think about that and examine and contemplate it as well as you can. Humans like to raise themselves up as the most supreme being on the planet or to be some kind of supreme being. But I would say that uh, a mackerel or some kind of sardine, how many fish or other people, beings, does it kill? But humans kill animals, how many every day? Which if we count insects and we count the things we buy, and if you're a butcher, for example, or work in a slaughterhouse, well, different counts for different people. <laughs> anyway, basically, Um Policy says, why on earth should we look down on animals? Because we are much more evil than all of the animals. The reason I'm talking about this is because it is one of the very important principles of stream entry to not look down on other beings and to see other beings as equal and to develop compassion towards other beings. So this is why I, meaning Lumpolo Silingdam, have focused upon this topic extensively. <laughs> We should not wish to kill or be mean to animals. I have the feeling that animals, just like us, are um, like in the same boat, all born into the same situation of suffering, of birth, aging, sickness and death, just as we are and so feel compassion for them because 
they are just as we are. If you can think like that, then you will be happy and will release yourself from those instincts. If they were to kill us the way we kill them, how would you feel? You cannot put a price on the life of a being, even if it's a mosquito or an elephant. It doesn't matter how big it is. And that uh, um, level of aggression and nastiness of humans is much higher than that of any animals in nature. But we sit there and think of dumb animals and of ourselves as humans as the top of the tree of evolution. I assume if you are all here listening, then you are here because you are Savaka, uh, followers of the Buddha and his teachings, and that you seek to attain stream entry. And so if you wish to attain stream entry, you must have metta. Uh, you must have this compassionate and uh, helpful and compassionate um, loving kindness towards other beings, other sentient beings. And so this is a very important factor to develop and to cultivate this. We do not bother or wish to bother animals and we are happy when we are able to help an animal out of a fix. For example, helping a beetle out of a swimming pool it got stuck in or helping a beetle stuck on his back get back on his feet because the ants were going to eat him or helping an old lady across the road or whatever should take pleasure in helping other beings including animals and humans <laughs> This is the first principle of the sila, of the five precepts that a lay person who wishes to attain stream entry must develop. The second principle is, of course, atinatana. Uh, not stealing possessions or money or beloved things from other people or other sentient beings. Nobody wants to have their things stolen from them. Did you ever hear of anybody uh, advertising that they have lots of treasures and money at home and invite anybody to come and take it? 
าจจะมีที่ไหนบ้างก็ได้อาตมาชีวิตอย่างน้อยแต่ว่าชีวิตที่เกิดมาผ่านมานี่ยังไม่เคยพบไม่เคยเห็น Maybe there is somebody who's crazy enough to do that, or there was, but me, meaning l u m p o r u s i himself, says, I have never heard of or seen such a thing in my life. ก็เป็นอนุว่าเท่าดีทราบคนก็ดีสายก็ดีไม่ต้องการให้เรายื้อย่างทรัพย์สินของเขา When I look at animals, they seem good. They don't want my stuff, and they don't. Want me to take their stuff, and that's okay. We have feelings, and so do they. Meaning animals. So destroying. Or stealing is can also destroying. It's also stealing something from somebody, or stealing or destroying other people's things. How is this done? Well, there are many levels and ways of stealing or destroying other people's things. The Buddha said. The Buddha said that he who wants the possessions and things of others is controlled by l o p e or l o p a which means greed, which is one of the three mind poisons: greed, anger, and ignorance. Which is for another teaching, another day. But is possessed by greed. He who wishes somebody else's possessions. In order to get rid of l o p a of greed, the mind poison of greed, we have to practice generosity, so that we can get rid of the greedy feeling. Says Long Policy, and here's me, a John Spencer, interceding, because I want to make this but more deeply understood as far as I understand it. Um, and hope I'm right. You can decide for yourselves that uh, getting rid of the feeling of greed or desire for something that makes you steal, take something from somebody else because it's so strong, it makes you break your precept of not stealing. This kind of greed um, should be eliminated. And it can be eliminated by examining it. That if you look at the feeling of wanting the possessions or the money or the things that other people have, like and jealousy of your neighbor because you want what he's got, he's got a new Rolls Royce. Or a new Ferrari. The street mentor does not have this intention or feeling present within, because this feeling is also a, it's a kind of anger hmm? that uh, greed. If you have greed, you see. What somebody else has and you don't have it, and you have desire for it, you can get jealous if it's your neighbor or whatever, or your enemy or your competitor in a game or in life. And uh, this this uh, greed can spur anger or jealousy and all sorts of other things and unskillful acts. And so people act in greed when they steal, because we're talking about the second precept of stealing. And so greed is uh, the reason that people break the second precept of stealing. And so one should examine one's own greed, because a stream enterer does not have this greed, and he does not wish to possess or take something. That is not his own or her own. 
ต่ว่าเรากลับให้ทรัพย์สินของเราให้เป็นประโยชน์แก่บุคคลอื่น But the stream enterer would give their own possessions to another person uh, to be useful to other people, especially if it's a possession they don't need or don't want, which could be useful to others, and even sometimes if it's something they do actually still like or need or want. But um, I think that's. Uh, When that gets to the point where even things that you actually need, you will give to others, this may be stepping towards the second level of enlightenment. And so, the generosity, as it gets bigger and bigger, as your the qualities get more and more subtle, the stream enter moves towards the uh, once returner to the s a g i t a k a m i Anyway, so back to l u n g p o l u s i เป็นปฏิปทาเพื่อก้าวเข้าไปสู่ความเป็นพระสุดาบัน And so this uh, understanding that to rid oneself of greed is necessary to complete the sila of not stealing to be rid of the desire and intention to steal or uh, or, or to desire the things of others will also help to rid of anger and jealousy and other subversions. Mutations of greed, because anger and jealousy are born of greed and ignorance. Anger is born of ignorance. Greed is born of ignorance. Greed, anger, and ignorance are the three mind poisons. Ignorance has to be present for greed to arise. Ignorance has to be present for anger to arise. And so, although uh, ignorance is one of the three mind poisons, the other two mind poisons can only happen because of the presence of ignorance. Ignorance is avicca, not knowing the true nature of things, and uh, enlightenment is vicca, knowing the true nature of things. And so, avicca, ignorance, is at fault for this. Uh, the stream enter is happy to practice helping others and giving, because he looks at how much greed or how much regret or how hard it is to give. When he makes or she makes the act of giving. And um, noticing this within, that when I give my favorite amulet to, I gave my favorite amulet to somebody uh, of value to me some time ago, and I examined how much. And this is John Spencer speaking. I examined how much I was. It hurt to hand it over and give something that actually you're still attached to. And so, it's when you give something, to notice how hard it is to give, or how easy it is to give, and how much attachment you still feel, and to notice that and develop a distaste for it, is part of destroying this feeling. And so, a stream enter is happy to practice generosity and to give his own possessions, but doesn't want to steal. He has the sila, the precept of not stealing or desiring the possessions of others, but in addition, also is happy to give useful things to others. Mm. And examining within, is seeing and wishing, using this gen practice of generosity to examine lopa greed and attachment within when giving. How much is present and how much has still been destroyed, and to um, through seeing how much is still present, to then be able to destroy the remnants of what is still present by practicing more and more giving. So it's a great chance to see one's own greed and attachment, and it's a great way to see where it's hiding, so you can destroy it. ไม่มีความทะเยอทะยานอยากได้ทรัพย์สินสมบัติของบุคคลอื่นมาเป็นของตน And so the stream enterer doesn't want to steal. It's not he keeps he or she keeps the rule of not stealing. Rather, that 
he doesn't even have the intention to steal anymore, which is the second of the five precepts. And I just take a little pause now, and the recording will continue straight away. <laughs> But the soda banner, to continue after my pause, um, says Lung Paulus Siling Dam, still wants to be rich, or might be rich, or might want to be, and uh, s still wants to enjoy these kind of things. <laughs> But this kind of wanting to be rich or want to have a nice house or nice family with nice house and life uh, is not what the Buddha criticized because he did not class this as lop or lopa, greed. Uh, what he meant by greed was when you covet the possessions of others or the success of others, be it professional success or some treasure they have or the new Ferrari, but um, this jealous kind of anger, which is greed. This, uh, jealousy is uh, anger and greed, really. Mm. Greed, anger and ignorance, the three mind poisons. Jealousy is a mixture of anger and greed. And so it is the greed that the Buddha meant was not the greed of a sodabana, a stream enterer who would like to be rich or enjoys to be rich or might be rich. Being rich is not being greedy. And he likes a soda a stream enterer likes to help others with his riches. Uh, but he doesn't want other people's riches. Or he doesn't want something he hasn't earned himself or herself. And so the Buddha didn't class that as greed and did not uh, criticize this. And states that the stream entra may still wish to have these things, but he gets these things through what is called sama achiwa or sama achib, which means right profession, which means he doesn't steal and uh, he gets the things he wants through uh, moral methods and means, well, good old hard work, let's say. In order to get rid of the lobe, the lopa, the greed, uh, which is meant by coveting other people's possessions or jealousy of other people wanting other people's things, uh, is to practice dana, or haitan, practice dana, generosity, by giving things to people and examine how difficult it is or easy it is for you to do so. And if you find it difficult, then you see what that you possess an obstacle in your heart, some baggage to carry around and you're going to want to get rid of it <coughs> because that's what it is it's just heavy baggage and it's fear fear of giving too and so the way to get rid of greed is through generosity and uh, the sodapana practices this the stream enterer can be rich but he will um, combat his or her greed with the practice of generosity and also not just in order to destroy one's own greed but to do it because there is a feeling a mood of love and compassion and generosity and uh, yeah, feel sorry for or, or compassion for others and that is also done through this that these motives are present within the heart of a stream enterer that if we have 
fulfilled or some people like to say attain I always say there's nothing to attain there's just something to regain because mm. we already have it it's not something to attain it's just something to discover or uncover our true nature it's been there from the beginning the Buddha nature so Polo's healing dam says that uh, this practice of dana is very important and that the stream enterer will have this feeling of wanting to help others and wanting to, and feeling sorry for and wanting to alleviate the sufferings of others should be present. <laughs> Long policy talks now to move on to the third of the five precepts of the lay person, Kame Sumicha Jara Wiramani. I refrain from wrong sexual behavior. <coughs> Sorry. And that uh, Lung policy says that most people will understand by this that this means no adultery, that you do not um, go with somebody else's husband or wife, or you do not uh, cheat on your own husband and wife. <laughs> เมตตาโนสมเด็จพระพิธมารทรงตรัสว่าสามีเขาก็ดีปัญญาเขาก็ดีลูกเขาก็ดีหลานเขาก็ดีเลงเขาก็ดีอยากเขาก็ดีคน
how can I resist it, you might say. It says Lumpur ceiling down to the audience. He says that, Lumpo says that we ourselves do not want somebody else to come and take our boyfriend or girlfriend or wife or husband and lay down with them without our knowing behind our backs and it would hurt very much if such a thing would to happen and so how could we wish to make somebody else have to suffer in that way if we do not like it ourselves and that the stream enterer for these reasons and through his nature does not have such inclinations <coughs> And that we should respect others because they have feelings just like we do, which is a bit like the old English saying, uh, do unto others as you would have others do unto yourself. It's treat other people the way you would like to be treated. It's a teaching, but um, in the way of a sotapan, of a stream enterer, it is not just a teaching, it is a realization. It is realized, mean, it has been made real. It's not just a rule to keep, it's his nature. Uh, not as much as a once returner or a never returner or an arahant, but it's begun to become his nature. ตอนนี้ท่านเรียกว่าสันโดษยินดีแต่อย่าเพิ่งคู่ครองของตัวตอนนั้นหักอารมณ์ข่มใจเข้าไว้เมื่อการสัมผัสระหว่างเพศไม
็จะมองเห็นได้ว่าทั้งต้นชายและท่านหญิงก็ไม่มีไม่พึงปรารถนาเราไม่ต้องการชั้นใดเขาก็ไม่ต้องการชั้นนั้นนอกจากคำโมสาวาดวาจาที่ไม่ตรงกับความจริงแล้วองค์สมเด็จพระบัณฑิตแก้วให้ระงับถ้อยคำคือคำหยาบเป็นเครื่องสะเทือนใจของบุคคลผู้รับฟังวาจาสอบเสียดยุด And the Buddha told these kind of things to make the listener think carefully about their own behavior. That we ourselves don't like to be lied to or to have people um, criticize us or gossip about us or. Create false stories or make us lose our fame or have to shame. And so why would we wish to do this to others? Or to speak things which are of no use at all to anybody. The Buddha also recommended. No chit chat, small talk, empty talk. Nice day, isn't it? And hello, good morning. And uh, oh, what do you think about the game yesterday? And all of this kind of empty chit chat. We would say that on the path to enlightenment, you have to also um, let go of that and only speak of useful things. Which sounds very difficult because we've been used to doing that for millions of lifetimes. So it's very easy to say, but not so easy to do. No empty chit chat. Talk about football and films and food and stuff like that. The Buddha called it dirachan pasa, um, animal talk. Not the talk of the area of the enlightened beings. เรื่องความว่าทิ้งทั้งหมดนี้เราเองเราก็ไม่ต้องการเมื่อเราไม่ต้องการแล้วใครเขาจะต้องการข้อที่ห้าองค์สมเด็จพระวิจิตรมารทรงแนะนำให้ละจากการดื่มสุราได้มีไร And so nobody wants to be lied to and we ourselves hate it so we shouldn't do it to others Lastly the fifth precept is To getting drunk on intoxicants that make you unskillful. Because precisely that, it makes you very unskillful, and you might commit acts which would either bring you, at the least, some embarrassment and regrets, and at the worst, you might end up drunk driving, killing somebody, and. Or even just losing your temper and killing one of your own family in a drunken stupor, and doing life for murder or getting a death sentence, and this kind of wrong behavior and wrong speech that comes from being intoxicated. และเป็นเหตุให้บุคคลอื่นเขาเหยียดหยามดูถูกดูหมิ่นคนดื่มสุราไม่ไรไม่เป็นที่นิยมของคนดีหลวงพ่อ said that uh, to drink alcohol and get be a drunkard is not what uh, the preference of a good person good people don't do that uh, people with good hearts don't do it which I would Possibly argue with in certain cases, not as l u m p o r a s i as a j a n Spencer in t w i n t e r s e a to say that some people get drunk because they're very sad, but they're also ignorant like all of us, and you can cause other people suffering. Nobody likes a drunkard; he's a pain in the ass. Somebody who's very drunk and wanders up and chews your ear off and God knows what, and or sometimes threaten you and get violent and all sorts. It's not fun for anybody except other people who are just as drunk. And so um, the Buddha was very strong on this one. And 
and that uh, good people prefer not to do it because they see the badness that comes out of it and how it affects every, the lives of the people around the person as well. And um, a stream enterer has absolutely no desire to enter into such states of unskillful intoxication. Um, but that uh, the Buddhist lay person before stream entry should keep this rule of not intoxicating yourself. Now, if that means drugs too, I think what it means is intoxication, becoming intoxicated. And so to drink whiskey, uh, if you have half a shot before going to bed, because it helps you sleep, I might argue that that's okay. But I don't know what the Buddha would say, and I don't know what Lumparusi Lingdam would say. But I would say that uh, taking things to get intoxicated and becoming intoxicated is definitely for anybody with any sense in their head to be avoided and undesirable. And so a stream enterer has already got that much sense in their heads. A normal person hasn't. Lung <coughs> <coughs> Po says that uh, for those who want to keep drinking and uh, getting drunk, doesn't matter, they can do so because he's not giving this teaching for such people. He's giving this teaching for those who wish to find the path of the stream enterer, of the Sotapanna. And so those who are seeking that should keep listening and those who are not seeking that, this teaching will not be useful because if you wish to be getting intoxicated and continuing with self-intoxication and making embarrassing and harmful or at least upsetting and bothersome mistakes with people and being a bother and being more of a burden because of it to others around you, then you're not seeking the path of the stream enterer. You're just seeking um, oblivion in intoxication. These five precepts are what the Buddha considered to be what all people need to keep to attain stream entry. Even these five basic precepts lie within and are the basis or the hub of the many precepts of the Samanera novice monk and even of the monk himself. Lumpurusilingdam uh, says that the Samanera might have his ten rules and the monk his two hundred and twenty-seven, but if he just breaks one of these five precepts, these first five precepts, then all of his two hundred and twenty-seven rules are already destroyed. And so, if you can't keep these first five basic precepts, then why should one uh, consider oneself capable of um, keeping all 227 of a Buddhist monk? So, Lumpola Siling Dam reiterates that the most important thing as a basis and necessary uh, thing to be present within any practitioner in order to attain stream entry or in order to um, become, in order to enter the state which the Buddha described as a stream enterer, 
which has a path and a fruit. So to enter the path of the stream enterer is the five precepts. These are the base and five most necessary components. Without those, not going any further. <laughs> เวลามีน้อยยกตัวอย่างมาแค่น้อยๆอย่างนางโคตรตราสาวใช้คําว่านางสามาวดีในตอนต้นนี้นางขโมยผ้าดอกไม้ของพนายวรรณสีตําลึ
And she answered, yes, I realize that. And this shows how her sila, her precepts, uh, allowed her to even uh, be ready to die rather than break them which is part of what made her a stream enterer. So Lumpur Sealing Dam just translates that, well, reiterates that uh, she told the king that she and 500 other women had been listening to the Buddha. And it just so happened that uh, all of them attained stream entry in the listening of this sermon. <laughs> And then there was uh, another lady who was jealous of Nang Samawadi, who was looking up to the Buddha. And she wanted to harm uh, Nang Samawadi and the other 500 three mantras because she did not have any faith in the Buddha. And this is why she gave the chickens to Nang Samawadi to make chicken curry for the king. And so Lumpoli Siling Dam just relates shortly that the king wanted to eat the chicken curry. And how Nang Samawadi refused it. Because she was keeping the sila, the precepts, and cannot kill animals. They said, but this is the order of the king. You might even be uh, executed. And she said, never mind. If I die through keeping my precepts, I accept it. So she refused to kill animals. And so may I say to you, says Lumpolu Siling Dam, to you faithful Buddhist people, that the precepts are essential components of the stream enterer and his mental makeup and his spiritual, his psyche, let's say his psyche. <laughs> And Nang Samawadi stopped uh, tricking the king by making profit on the flowers as a result of stream entry. Then she stopped lying ever again.
ก็กล้าที่จะยืนยันว่าเราจะไม่ยอมฆ่าไก่ But although the order to execute her was issued by the king, all 500 stream enterers of these women who had heard the sermon of the Buddha and attained stream entry turned up to support their leader Nang Samawadi and all refused to kill the animals in unison. Because they respect the teachings of the Buddha. They will uh, take care of their precepts more than taking care of their own life. So if they have to die, they should all die. Because they had faith now in the winner of the ten perfections, the great conqueror and subduer of Mara the Lord Buddha himself. And that they preferred Soda Banahood stream entry as their goal than preserving their own lives because it is the first stage of the true goal of the Buddhist. And so I recommend to you who listen, says Lung Pao Rusi Ling Dang, that you look at the third fetter and practice generosity and look at within to see jealousy and greed and anger and ignorance and to develop true sila, true precepts uh, as part of your path to stream entry. So may you Buddhist people, through understanding this matter, uh, become, uh, increase your resolve in cultivating true precepts, through cultivating the desire to attain stream entry, you should cultivate the desire to attain true precepts because you understand them as an integral core facet of how a stream enterer is within. Mm. And he who does remain within these precepts will have happiness in this life and in the world to come. The stream enterer will have happiness in this life and in the next life will be born into a life with happiness. ขึ้นชื่อว่าความทุกข์ใดๆที่มีปัจจัยเกิดจากศีลไม่มีสมรรถนะท่านพุทธบริษัท
จะเองกายบนเตียงนอนและกระพื้นทั้งข้างล่างจะยืนหรือจะเดินจงกรมก็ได้ and so I recommend to you Buddhist people who are seriously intending to practice this path and to make the play for stream entry to practice when you fold your legs and meditate when you sit in a chair when you're driving the car and even when you bend down or lay down in the bed to examine these matters and to look at yourself within and to find the path and to see the three mind poisons and to eliminate jealousy and aversion and anger and greed through practicing generosity and compassion uh, practicing uh, the four Brahma Viharas of uh, compassion, generosity, willingness to help and equanimity and to see the importance of the sila as if you are going to try for it then you might as well reach the goal if not why try for it and so therefore to understand how sila and the four Brahma Viharas the third of these matters the sila Uh, uh, to develop the sila by destroying the fetters of greed and the fetters of anger and the fetters of ignorance. Mm. To think of the precepts all of the time and keep them in mind all of the time, to be mindful of them. This is sila nunsati, to be mindful of the sila, of the precepts, kamatan, the basis of action or practice, of, or applied practice. The kamatan is the basis of applied practice. Sila nunsati is to be mindful of the sila, of the precepts. Putta nunsati is to be mindful of the Buddha. Tamba nunsati is to be mindful of the Dhamma. Sankha nunsati is to be mindful of the enlightened ones who have reached any of the four uh, paths or fruits of enlightenment who are worthy of reverence for their great efforts. Uh, so sila nunsati to maintain sila nunsati mindfulness of keeping your sila and whether you are keeping them in your speech and your actions and your intentions in your heart the four brahma viharas or celestial abodes of meta Karuna Mutita Le Ubeka uh, uh, Generosity, so giving uh, a compassion, generosity, willingness to be generous and to help, to actually put your hand to doing it, not just thinking about it and being compassionate, but actually getting down to doing it. And Ubeka Ekonimati which I shall explain in another podcast because it goes deep, equanimity. And these four Brahma Viharas help you to keep the sila by practicing the Brahma Viharas and help you to see the beauty of remaining within the sila, within the precepts, and are also essential uh, companion of the practice and the basis of applied practice. And so we have reached about the end of the time to talk for today and please remember these teachings which are my, not my teachings say I and say Lung Paul Lucy Lingdam but are the teachings of the Buddha because
because Lumpa Rufsi Ling Dam would often say, a lot of people say I am enlightened, I'm a soda panda, I'm a arahant. I don't claim to be any of those things. All I am doing is passing on the teachings of the enlightened one. And so he doesn't say if he is or he isn't. And he's running out of time for this evening's talk. <laughs>